What is up you guys and welcome to another VPL Vanilla Pokemon League battle with your truly of course the Skyrender and today we're going to actually look upon another person's battle and it's against Tid versus Dan or you die and um, overall they're both had a really really interesting draft which made me really interesting to see their first wipe battle because we don't know whether or not Dan K is going to upload his own battle and quite frankly it doesn't necessarily matter as long as the game is interesting and uh, from the get here we see if Tid signed with uh, Scissor, Necrozma, Incineroar, Pukamuku, which definitely is annoying, uh, Sumeril, and Raikou. So overall, definitely a very, very strong team. And you know, Raikou is something he's drafted every season since we actually started. So that's definitely a Pokemon that doesn't go away from his draft. And uh, on that side, we see Mega Tyranitar and um, Dredagon, which is really good, uh, Frostlass and Ninetales. Hiroshi and Infernape. So overall it looks really solid. I guess the only thing I see directly is that Incineroar could potentially uh, do some decent damage versus Frostless and uh, Ninetales, uh, but also at the same time we also see Infernape being able to most possibly eradicate Tid's team once Pukamuku and Azumarill is gone, because the other one doesn't necessarily deal with that. So yeah, with that said, let's of course go into the match. Should be stated, I only know that the game is interesting and don't necessarily know um, how it went. So I'm definitely excited about that. Also should be stated, Tid Sign has a Mega Scissor, not a regular Scissor. So let's see, Dan starts off with uh, Mega Tranitar, so right, possible Rocker, or just go for a very early um, um, setup. And he starts with Mega Scissor. So, by default, I would say that uh, it would be good to be switching out, definitely, as uh, I could see, definitely, Tid C and that Frost Lazor in Ninetales could be a possible lead here as Dragon comes in. Uh, and with Rough Skin and whatnot, that could definitely whittle Scissor down, so it's not a bad option at all. Plus, Dragon can be carry Fire Punch, so it could definitely be able to deal with this Scissor as we see directly a U-turn. I'm expecting the Rocky Helmets here. Um, it does a very, very solid amount, actually. And uh, at least we see both two, two double residual damage in um, Rocky Helmet and um, Rough Skin. So really good on that side. As Necrozma comes in here very freely. Um, I don't believe um, Necrozma is nothing to be afraid of. However, I believe they could actually change rocks here. But it could very likely die to Geyser Cannon. As um, Cumberlane and across my goes directly for Stealth Rocks. And as stated, I presume Dragon will do the same. So, yeah, exchanging rocks here. Um, Dan has definitely weaker two rocks, so he needs to get rid of his own rocks. And it looks like he doesn't have a way of actually getting rid of them. At the same time, that looks to be the same on actually Tid's side. So, both rocks are here to stay. So, Chamberlain, my bad. As Chamberlain goes with Photon Geisha. And that's unfortunately going to KO the Dragon. There was no way he's taking that. And uh, Scissor got a lot more tougher here directly due to that. Yurashi is a possible Pokemon to be dealing with that. But as it stands right now, it's tough. It means Infernape is possibly a Pokemon that has to come in on that. And that is not ideal. As we see, Alolan Ninetales comes in. And the Shiny one looks really, really terrific. And goes directly for Snow Warning, of course. Um, the way I see it, Aurora Veil is an option here. Um, probably the strongest option, as I expect, uh, Nasty Plot. Alright, that was unexpected. That was definitely unexpected. Definitely expecting Aurora Veil, as we see Photon Geisha again. Was I expecting Heat Wave? Uh, Photon Geisha works fine too, which should still do a solid amount. And uh, really, really surprised that we didn't see Aurora Veil. Definitely would have been a good way of actually um, helping the other ones to be able to set up. As now we're going to go for Moonblast. Possibly over. 50% maybe, um, a little bit over, a little bit over, alright, fair enough, um, I wonder, I wonder, I felt unnecessary, definitely a waste of a lot of Ninetales turn there, I definitely feel that, um, a lot of Ninetales is not necessarily a sweeper, so even with Nasty Plot, it doesn't necessarily pack a punch, that, I think it's like base 80 somewhere on a special attack, Hororo. however, we can see possibility here of um, the snow body or um, the thing that made you unlikely to hit and hail. So it's not all bad as Incineroar comes in a very good switch in. Um, I don't know what couldn't be here. I mean, let's be, let's be frank, Incineroar is a great check towards, um, <laughs> towards the Frostlass as 
Destiny Bond could be an option here, but Incineroar tend to be Scarfed actually, and goes for knockoff, but that's gonna hit him super effectively and knock out the Frostlass. Wow. Did not expect that. Definitely did not expect that. And of course, with the Focus Sash being completely, completely wasted there. Uh, so Joshua comes in. Since we know already that it is Scarfed, this means that the Tyranitar can possibly actually set up here. So he has an opening, however, Pukamuku Waltz. Mega Tranitar, unfortunately, as I'd probably say the strongest play would be going directly for a crunch. As we see the Pukumu comes in. Yeah, that's um That's an annoying mon. I it's definitely the deed most annoying mon. I've seen many tackle Pukumuku by carrying Toxic on actually most potent sweeper. As he goes for Dragon Dance. Right, that's a tough call. Definitely a tough call. I then again, I don't know how much damage actually. Uh, Mega Tranator does top Yuki Muku. It's still 165 base attack, so it's it's still fairly high. Um, keeps going for Dragon Dance. All right, this is the part where I probably said it would better go for that heavy amount of damage as fast as possible. As we see Toxic here, that's that's not gonna be alright. The only thing I can hope for is the Tranator has rest. If that would be some kind of weird rest sleep talk, Dragon Dance set with Crunch maybe, but I don't expect that. I definitely don't expect that as um, we are going to see him going for crunch, all right? And how much does 165 do? Not enough. And even with the um, defense drop we saw there, it's not gonna matter because of unaware. It means that even if it loses defenses, it still won't lose its defenses. So at this point, it could easily stall out Tyranitar. Ooh, that's rough. That's very rough. Like I said, it is very likely one C. Um, Oh, dear lord, actually it did. Maybe it isn't? Maybe the effect is only on uh, the opponent, I guess. My bad, it, well, that will actually knock it out. But as I said before, usually Toxic are an option here for for the most potent attacker to be able to uh, deal with Pyukimoku. That said, it looks like the changes on the Pokemon itself are affiliated. So, uh, at the time being, we see a plus two... Dragon Dancing Tyranitar, who will be unfortunately, sadly, easily knocked out by, um, well, apparently, the Assumer. I was actually expecting the Scissor here, but that, that works too, as Tyranitar is going to fall. Um, that's unfortunate, but at the same time, you know, what, this is the game we get into, and it's very, very dangerous. Yurash and Infernape are still around, and Yurash is definitely an option here, definitely with Iron Head, it could start doing some shenanigans, actually, flinch hacks and whatnot. Even if the switching is Raikou or um, Scissor, this still will be flinched out, and that's actually quite right, as we are going to see Thunder Punch, actually. Hmm. Alright. Scores the para? No. No 20% Serene Graze para. However, it should be able to have speed, so it doesn't necessarily matter as Thunder Punch is going to actually KO. Um, now, the thing is here, I don't think this is Scarfed. I definitely don't think that. Uh, as Don Marielle comes in, I might actually butcher that name, and um, yeah, Thunder Punch is definitely the weaker move. Uh, to be honest, Iron Head would probably be the stronger play, um, as Raikou goes for Shadow Ball, so he's not Scarfed, you can definitely see that already, and Retaliation is going to be with a Sin Headbutt. So alright, that should do fair. Yeah, it actually does fair. However, it looks like his force is second in worst case scenario. Uh, actually goes directly for... Um, Infernape. It looks like also like all the dance teammates are named after Pocketubers is what I'm getting at, or famous league player. And I think he's forced to lock himself into close combat, and that means Assumeril comes in again and do what Assumeril does. And from this point, it could very well just go for a belly drum and wrap the game up. So at this point, this is definitely GG. Uh, Tid definitely got this in the bag. As uh, going for close combat means that Assumeril is a primary threat at the moment and there is nothing you can do to stop it. Close combat won't even come near. As I do expect to see Belladrum here, or possibly that it pops the Citrus if it is a Citrus set. Um, yeah, it's a Citrus set. That means he will get his Belladrum no matter what. And Aqua Jet should be able to kill both. And, and there is really no way of actually working around that. So, uh, GG to both players. Definitely. Like, there is nothing else going to happen here that won't exchange or won't change the outcome. Uh, the only way I see it being a big misplay from my side would definitely see uh, Ninetales played as an offensive Pokemon from the dance side. I really believe 
that Pokemon with Aurora Veil and Free Stripe dealt fairly alright with most of the matchup and Wait and Water Fire to possibly deal with the Scissor, but Aurora Veil would have actually recovered that and dealt with that fairly nicely. Uh, on Tit's side, I definitely wouldn't say anything weird. I think he did everything right, outside of possibly um, going to Raikou and Asuma really had a fairly decent matchup anyway. Uh, that said, though, I mean, you, you always expect the Thunder Punches, I guess, is a fair way of actually switching out. I think the worst was from Dan, actually, who um, I felt didn't necessarily come into the game that good. He definitely felt whittled down early on and didn't necessarily recover. Both Incineroar, or I mean, Infernape and Yurashi was key mons for this wife of Alan, but he didn't get the opening he needed, and that's by default, it just just fell, basically. They couldn't do anything as long as Asumaril and Pukumuk was active. And while Pukumuk was gone, Asumaril wasn't, and they just, like I said, didn't necessarily get the opening. And of course, I guess no one would expect an Scarfed in Cinerize, and sure as hell wouldn't, so for what it's worth, that's definitely, like, decent. Um, very surprised by Drygon, though. I think Drygon would have been a really good Pokemon overall to have throughout the Wife of Battle, but it was dealt with really, really early and didn't get a chance to shine. So overall, I say Dan had a rougher match here than he should have, and it was basically to the first turns there, which just proving off. And of course, the Nightal said that, which I think was the wrong one for this specific Wife of Battle. However, I, I won't discredit him or anything like that. I definitely want to see what he thought when he used his uh, Ninetales. As I said before, Ninetales is a very complex Pokemon, and. Um, I only use it for Royal and Free Strike. When I see another set, I have a tendency to just like, yeah, that's the wrong set. But, you know, he might have an alternative plan, which I, of course, did not know about. And quite frankly, I think it would be very dishonest of me of saying anything else. But it was an interesting set to see. So, with that said, guys, thank you, of course, for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Wife of Bell. And join us for our next Wife of Bell versus Darude and Carl. So, with that said, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.